Well, that brings us to the, the fluffy animals. So we've got Panda. So Panda is one of the names for Google's algorithm changes, one of the biggest ones. Um, so Panda is, was it, it was first released in 2011, but there's been two revisions this year, and this really has dramatically affected a lot of websites. I actually noticed this quite a lot because um, middle of this year, when these changes came out, our phone was ringing off the hook. So we're getting a lot of phone calls from companies that had dropped off Google and were wondering why and wanted help. So what this does, what Panda does, is it really focuses on sites that have low quality content. Because what Google wants to do by having all these algorithms, it wants to make it the best search engine ever. Because if it's the best search engine ever, you guys will use it. And if you use it, more people pay for the ads and they make money. So what they need to do is they need to offer some value, something for free that's really good, so that it encourages users and they can get money from advertising. So what this does is if your website is lacking content, you know, they don't want to bring users to a website that doesn't have good content. So if you're saying that you're all about um, medical procedures but you don't have good information on that page, they don't want to bring people there. So that's really what Panda's about. And every revision of Panda makes sure that it cracks down even more on the quality of uh, content on your website. Penguin um, is another really big algorithm change. So Penguin, again, is more focusing on sort of the links and the quality of the links that you have coming to your website. And again, there's been a lot of revisions on Penguin. Penguin's one of the tricky ones because they really don't tell you what they're doing. Just suddenly you notice your website's not ranking as well and there's all these factors you need to try and work out to, to, to fix it and to get it back up again. Hummingbird was a huge change. So Hummingbird actually revolutionised search. It was a really big change of how the actual Google search engine works. Uh, Hummingbird introduced conversation search. So you might have your tablet in front of you and you might say, uh, who's the President of the United States? What's his wife's name? How old, is, how old is she? Like if you could talk to your tablet, which is a little bit sad, but very useful if you're driving, which shouldn't be searching. But, <laughs> um, but it, yeah, it's really good in that way. Also, the thing that they did was it made it really fast. So it actually improved the speed of the search engine. So this change here was as if Google took the engine out of an old car, completely replaced it. Whereas with Penguin and Panda, they were just doing a couple of modifications on the engine, if we're thinking about it in terms of cars. So there is um, documentation out there that compares the algorithms if you want to remember in your mind. You probably don't have to, but I kind of do when I'm meeting with clients. I need to know what the difference is between them and to remember that there's some really good graphics that explain the major differences and highlights of each um, change. All these, what these really mean is it's harder for you to rank in Google because they're getting better at finding the better websites and cracking down on the bad ones. Now this was a major algorithm update that came out in mid-May this year. Uh, this one here was a revision of Panda, so they call it Panda 4.0. Panda 4.0 was really cracking down again more on the quality of content on the website. The interesting thing about Panda 4.0 is websites like eBay actually lost rankings. Really big websites. So you can see here some of the winners and losers in this update. But what it really says is that no, no company is safe. You've got to keep up with what Google's doing. Then they brought out Panda 4.1. Um, this is one of the ones I had to add to the slides quite recently because it came out um, late October. Um, it did affect probably 3 to 5% of websites. And it was just really another revision making it even tougher for, for websites to keep up with rankings. Then we've got Penguin. Now this, this is really interesting, Penguin 3.0. The thing with Penguin is they took a year to bring out the next Penguin update. So when the first Penguin update came out, you were trying to make sure that your website ranked. You did all these changes, but you didn't know if they worked until 12 months later, until the next release came out. So it made it really difficult for companies to try and get their websites back up in Google. Mark to talk about penguins inside pandas. I won't go too much into this, but this is just an interesting one that came out very recently, once again in October. Um, everyone in our industry was preparing for the Penguin 3.0 update, and um, around the same time, basically, a lot of companies noticed their website rankings were doing strange things, um, which seemed more like a panda update. And, and then also at the same time, Google rolled out another update called Pirate 2, which was an anti-piracy update. So they basically rolled out three algorithms around the same time. Um, interestingly enough, Matt Cutts was on leave during this time as well. Um, but yeah, basically no one really knew what was happening. It took a few weeks and a lot of websites started ranking strangely increased, strangely decreased, and it affected like, companies globally on a massive scale. 
Um, and it was only after that period that everything sort of returned to normal. So, yeah, it, it can be very volatile. And you've got about 100 clients in Perth, and only two of ours were affected by the penguins inside pandas, but it had us all puzzled, like, what is going on here? Um, they're all back up now, but it was a really strange period for about two months where we just didn't know what was going on with their websites. Um, pigeon. So pigeon is a really good one. Um, okay, pigeon basically is local search. So pigeon is really uh, relevant in the US. We haven't seen it coming into Australia as much, but it is something to look out for. What it is, is Google likes local content. So if you're a local business and you focus on specific areas, it's really good to make sure that your website is optimised for those areas. That also means making sure that you're listed in local search directories. So you're really focusing on the key target areas in which your business operates. Uh, it also means that things like Google Plus reviews that are quite localised are very good for your rankings as well. So there's a few things that are rolled up in that, in that update. This is an example of um, one of our clients' traffic and every time a major algorithm happened and some of the effects it would have on traffic. So you can see, for example, when there's some major updates, it could be seasonal as well, but they might have a massive drop off in traffic. Um, a lot of the um, people that were ringing us were stuck here, whereas what you want to do is you want to keep on top of those rankings so you go back up again. But it is normal to experience a drop off in your traffic after a major update. You will notice as well that Google's changed. So I, for example, I went to New York a couple of weeks ago. Um, I Googled things to do in New York. And you see it comes up with what's called like a carousel or a knowledge graph. So it's just a different way of structuring Google. And again, this affects how your business um, comes up in the Google search. Another thing that I really like, I use this a lot, is Google Now. So although you may have Siri like I do, I don't really like Siri. If you go to Google, you can say, OK, Google, and you can say, Google, how long is it going to take me to get to work? And then Google starts to learn where your work is, so you can actually program in locations or home or whatever. And then what will Google will do, Google now will pop up every morning and say, oh, there's a bit of traffic on your way to work and, and let you know where. So that's really part of that. You can also see if you forgot where you parked your car, uh, it can also help you find your car. It actually um, it knows where you've stopped for a certain period, so that's really good. Um, it might be bad if you're a cheating spouse because it tracks all of your movements, but other than that, it's good. So if you look at the bottom there, um, that's actually where I've been the last couple of weeks. So it, it tracks really everywhere you've driven throughout Perth. Uh, and it also comes up with useful tips. So when I was in New York, I had my phone out and it said, nearby is the Empire State Building, nearby is this. So it actually knows exactly where you are and based on your location, it'll give you information. And that's really good um, for the future because as a business, you may want to have promotional things coming up if people are in a certain area. 